All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, if you would, this morning, turn your Bibles to Ephesians in chapter 6. We're going to continue our studies there in Ephesians 6. We'll go over what we have taught the last two weeks, um, just a tad bit as a precursor. And then we'll go into Ephesians 6 and putting on the whole armor of God. Um, so as I said yesterday, we taught this here with some folks in a Bible study and we enjoyed ourselves. We had a good time in the scriptures, fellowshipping over the word, and it was uh, very, very productive, I thought, and uh, very beneficial. So before we read this morning, um, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. As we do pray this morning, do again remember Brother Leonard Rogers, Stephanie, and that family, and what they're going through with Leonard's mom, and just keep them in your prayers and your heart. Um, each time that you do pray, that God give them peace, comfort, and grace, and um, we believe that He will, and we believe that He has. So let us uh, read. We're going to read, and uh, excuse me, we're going to pray. Then we're going to read. Um, let us go to the Lord in prayer first, Father. Again today, we're so thankful for another day of grace. Another day, Lord, in order to come together and fellowship over your word, uh, to teach and to open up about your word with one another, to discuss your word, to grow in your word, um, that we may become better ambassadors for Christ. We give you all the praise, thanks, honor, and glory for all that you've done for us in Christ. We do lift Leonard and Stephanie and the family up today as he's dealing with the loss of his mom. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for everything that you've made us in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And everyone did say, Amen. All right. So in Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to read the same verses that we've been reading. It's amazing how much we're getting out of these. Uh, we <clears throat> go ahead and go to verse 10 here, 610. Uh, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And that was the title of our first uh, study, was Be Strong in the Lord. And the power of His might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Okay? So uh, two weeks ago we taught, and we'll, we'll look at this again, we taught on our position and we taught about the book of Ephesians and we taught our, uh, about our position in Christ that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? And we talked about our walk applying what we have learned and what we have understanding of in order that we walk worthy of the vocation whereas we're called. And then we talked about doing so, maturing as a Christian, becoming a son of God, not a child, then we're able to stand over there in that warfare. And we talked about, back here, you've got to have this knowledge of where you are seated. Right? Okay. Over here, you've got to apply that, what you have learned and what you have understanding of. So over here, you can participate in the warfare. Right? So you heard me say this morning, it would be totally useless to bring someone who does not understand the sound doctrine that the Apostle Paul has delivered to bring them to Ephesians chapter 6 and teach them about war. Children don't belong in war. Babes don't belong in war, right? So what I want to show you today is this. I'm going to use a lot of this board. That's why I moved the podium because it's going to take a lot of the board in order to get this thing laid out for you. 
But I think this can help you. I, I think if you'll follow me through the verses that we're going to use, I think you'll see some things that will help you. All right, I want to show you three things in order to understand the Bible, to understand where you are in Christ. There's three things you can't get away from. And one of them is actually almost a cuss word to religious people. All right, one is doctrine. That word right there scares so many people. Doctrine, right? Doctrine is teaching. Doctrine is teaching. The other one is knowledge. Knowledge is learning. It's illuminating your mind. And then the other one is understanding. And that is comprehending what you have learned. I did work on the spelling of these words so I didn't have to scribble for y'all this week. Right? So, you got to have doctrine. you got to have knowledge of the doctrine being taught. And you got to have understanding. Let me show you something. Doctrine in the Bible does not grow. You grow in doctrine. Knowledge in the Bible does not grow. You grow in knowledge. You grow in your understanding of this and this, right? When you say that the doctrine grows or the knowledge grows, now that's how you get these guys out here saying, Jesus spoke to me on my way to the grocery store. Yeah. And I've got a new word for you. No, the knowledge that's in the book, the doctrine that's in the book is settled. What God gave Paul is settled. The doctrine is finished. You just have to come up to your understanding of the doctrine. You do that by learning. You do that by comprehending what you've learned. All right, so I found something in the Bible that uses these three words in one verse. And man, it's powerful. Go to Isaiah and chapter 28. Isaiah and chapter 28. Go to verse 9. Whom shall teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand what? Doctrine. Doctrine. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So the Bible is saying a child is not going to get sound doctrine. They're going to have to go through the process of learning, illuminating their mind, and coming to comprehension. Now, when I say child there, I mean a child in the faith. I mean someone who is newly a Christian. They're going to have to be taught sound doctrine repeatedly. And that's why we do a lot of repetitive teaching. They're going to have to be taught sound doctrine. And it's going to have to come by rightly dividing the word of truth. Watch how he says do it. Look in verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and then there a little. Of course, now I know he's talking about Israel here, but this is a horizontal truth, okay? So look again. Who shall teach what? Knowledge. And whom shall make to understand doctrine? Understand doctrine. You can't get away from it. If you're going to understand the Bible, you're going to know who you are in Christ, you're going to understand the book, you're going to be ready for warfare, you're going to walk, you're going to have to have doctrine, you're going to have to have the knowledge, you've got to have that mind illuminated, you've got to have understanding. Then you're going to have to apply all that, right? So I wanted to show you something about that. When he talks about the babe, he talks about the milk. Go to 1 Corinthians. This is not on the notes, but I wanted to show it to you. 1 Corinthians, and look at chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. 
And I, brethren, notice that he addresses them as what? Brethren. They're believers, right? Could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto what? Carnal. Even as unto what in Christ? Babes. Babes in Christ. I have fed you with the milk and not with the meat. For hereunto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. So-called church buildings are filled with people just like that. They're arguing about what color the carpet is, what you wore. You didn't say hey to them when you walked in the door. You didn't shake their hand. That's all carnal. That's all baby stuff, man. But the preacher didn't say hey to us. You know, it's all baby stuff. It's baby fine. And that's what the churches are filled with that type of stuff. He got my parking spot. I can't believe it. He knows I park here every Sunday. They got my seat. Y'all think I'm kidding. That happened to us in a big church. They'll go leave their Bible in that seat so you can't have it. I had a lady poke me on the arm one morning telling me that was her seat. Got bad news for you, not this Sunday. (laughs) I'm not moving. I'll not move for you. This is my seat this Sunday. Hey, man. Then she couldn't find anything else to say, and she saw a cross pin on my jacket, and she goes, Jesus is not on that, is he? I said, no, he's in heaven. <laughs> this people, this babies, this is what they are, they're babies. And you, you, you're going to take a baby and move him over here to where we're going this morning to show you this stuff in Ephesians <laughs> chapter 6. You're wasting your time. Because all you're going to do is make that armor carnal and physical, as in something that you can go do, jump out the closet, pull it out, and put it on. No. Well, I'm going to show you today, I think it's going to help you. So you see the doctrine, the knowledge, you understand, you see the teaching, right? And you see Isaiah. Go with me to uh, the book of Titus real quick before we get the motor running. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. And look at verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound Doctrine. Now go look at verse 10. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. How do you adorn something? Adorning means to decorate something, right? You put something on. It's a jewel. It's a treasure. You see it? Right? So it's the doctrine, he says, that you should adorn. Well, you've got people who are absolutely not growing because they don't get doctrine. As I explained to her, when we go back to the Gospels, we teach those Gospels, we can show doctrine in those Gospels. All right? But they don't use the Gospels to get doctrine. They use the Gospels to get storytelling. Good preaching messages, if you will, right? To make themselves look like something. But that's not what we're to do. All right? So... In Ephesians 6, we saw the whole armor of God. Now, here's where we're going to get started here this morning with this. I'll try to go as quickly as we can without missing anything or skipping anything. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And I've got to make sure that I have enough room on this board to accomplish what I want to accomplish this morning. So we're going to move this stuff off real quick. Anybody missed it, they can rewind and go back and get it, right? All right, Romans chapter 13, go to verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of what? Darkness. Darkness. What did Paul say we were fighting against in Ephesians? Rulers of darkness in this world, right? Watch this. And let us put on what? The armor of light. How do you get rid of darkness? With light. All right, so here we are. The armor of light. What did Ephesians tell us to put on? The whole armor of God? What do you think that might represent? Light? Amen? All right, go with me back to Ephesians now, and we're going to study that. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 13. We'll start there. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. All right? So the first thing he said do was what? 
Have your loins girt about with truth. Is there light and truth? Oh, yeah. Amen. See that? There's light and truth. Look at me with a, a verse here on that real quick. Go to Ephesians 1.13. We were there earlier this morning. We'll, we'll start at verse 12. All right, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ and whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Is that verse loaded with light? Christ, your gospel, the Holy Spirit sealing. You see that? So there's light. Watch this armor come together. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, look with me in uh, 421 of Ephesians. Watch verse, well, let's start at verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance. See that? What's the difference of, what's the difference of understanding and knowledge? Ignorance. That is in them because of the blindness of what? Their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greenness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is where? In Jesus. So there is light in the truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth will increase the light. Amen? So there is light in the truth, the whole armor of God. All right? I've got verses that we won't go through every one of them, just so you can see what we're doing here. So have that light, the light of the truth. All right? Now go down and look at Ephesians chapter 6 again. These things are in order here. Gird about with truth and have an on the breastplate of righteousness. See that? Breastplate of righteousness. Is there light and righteousness? Yeah. Whose righteousness? None in mine, is there? And no light in my righteousness. I have none. I'm negative. See that? There's light. All right. Go with me and look at some verses on that real quick. Go to Romans chapter 3. Don't, don't y'all get that disturbed look again now. Just stay with me, okay? Romans chapter 3. And we'll start at uh, 3 and 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the what? Knowledge, Knowledge of what? Sin. But now, but now, the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Watch this. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of what? Of Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have cut a sin and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. All right, you see that there's righteousness in Jesus Christ. That's where we are. We have His righteousness to our account. That is light. Okay, just stay with me, right? Stay with me, all right? So breastplate of righteousness. All right, now go back to Ephesians 6. All right. In verse 15, after you have the truth, after you have the breastplate, he says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. All right. Is there light in the gospel? Yes. The Bible says so, doesn't it? Yes. It's a gospel of peace. All right. There's light in it. 
It is light. Go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see the light of the gospel, right? Now go look over at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. In Ephesians 6, he calls it the gospel of peace. Watch this. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. All right, Galatians chapter 1. Verse 6, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So it's the gospel of the grace of God, which is the gospel of peace, right? Whereby we have peace with God. And it's light in that gospel. All right, go back with me again to... Ephesians 6. If you haven't figured it out, we're touching every one of these. Now you're in verse 16, 14, you've got the truth, you've got the breastplate of righteousness. 15, you've got your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. All right, now look at 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So is there light and faith? You got the proper faith, you got light. Right? This ain't going to make the charismatic shout, by the way. Okay, what this is doing, this is building doctrine in you that you can illuminate your mind, you can have the understanding of it, and you'll understand this whole armor of God. All right? So the faith there. Uh, look at uh, Galatians again. Galatians 2 and 16. Almost worded exactly the same as Romans 3. 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? By the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ and not by the works of the law, for the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So it's the faith of Jesus Christ. Is there light in the faith of Jesus Christ? Amen. All right, so back to Ephesians. Chapter 6. Truth, righteousness, gospel, Shield of faith. And look at verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. Is there light in salvation? Oh, yes. The Bible says so. Yeah. We're not talking about being saved from our physical enemies, we're talking about being saved, redeemed. Our hope, our glory, right? Go over and look at 1 Thessalonians. I promise you, there's a tie-in to most of this. Remember in 6, he talks about the work of darkness that's in this world, the rulers of darkness that are in this world. Look here at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. 
We're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober. Watch, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. You see that? Is anybody with me so far? This is all about the spiritual mind that we have, isn't it? Right? It's not a physical armor, folks. It's not something you get out of the closet and you go do for yourself. I'll show you this here in a second. So there's light and salvation and the hope of salvation. That doesn't mean I hope I'm saved. Right? My hope right now is what? Jesus Christ calling me out of here. Okay? That's the hope. My body's redeemed. I receive a body like unto his body. That's the only thing left to be done, folks. I'm saved eternally. I'm in Christ. He's in me. My hope of glory is leaving here. Okay? And we may leave before the day's over in the next second. We don't know. I mean, it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. But that's our hope as believers, right? To be delivered from this present evil world. If all we have here is hope, we're of all men most miserable. Okay? So our eternal abode and Christ getting us out of here, that is our hope. All right? All right? The next part of 17 in the book of Ephesians, he talked about the sword of the Spirit. We dealt with the Word of God last week. He said the sword, I'm going to put sword, and I'm going to put Word of God. Is there light in the Word of God? Right? There's light in the Word of God. Anybody see this armor coming together yet? And it's an armor of what? Thank you. It's an armor of light. It's going to tell you what you have to have in order to have the whole armor of God, isn't it? Yeah. All right? So he said... The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Salvation of God. Faith of Christ. Gospel of Christ. Righteousness of Christ. And the truth of Christ. Right? That armor is coming together as an armor of light. Go back with me to Ephesians. Helmet of salvation. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. All right, now watch 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there in two with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Is there light in prayer? Well, only, only if you are praying according to truth Righteousness of Christ, the gospel as you know it, faith in what you know about Christ, and salvation, and by according to the Word of God. There's power and light in prayer, right? There's no light in prayer that comes out of my little book. You've got to pray according to the Spirit. You've got to pray according to knowledge and doctrine and understanding. You've got to pray that way. So there is light in prayer. Now watch what Paul does. Look at the next verse, verse 19. He makes a request that you pray for him. And, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may, what? Open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. What's Paul saying I want to do? I want to spread some more light. Pray for me that I might go spread some more light. And what is he going to share to shed that light? The mystery of the gospel. Look at Colossians 4. Look at verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. See that? For which I am also in bonds. 
Folks, I stumbled on something here. Watch this. Truth of Christ. I'm going to come back and get that for you in just a second. Righteousness of Christ. Gospel of Christ. Faith of Christ. Salvation of Christ. Sword of the Spirit, Word of God. Word of God. Got that? Of Christ. Watch that come together. Go back over here and look at uh, Colossians 3. Look at verse 16. Let the word of Christ, see that? Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. To what you have in doctrine, knowledge, and understanding of Christ, that's going to be that judgment seat of Christ. That's where that's going to come down, where the rubber hits the road, folks. All right? What you're full of and how much word you have in you according to correct doctrine, correct knowledge, correct understanding, is going to be your judgment. Everything is not of the Word of Christ. Everything is not the pure Word of Christ. It's bad doctrine. It's bad beliefs. is going to be burned up. Those works are going to burn, right? What's going to be left is that which is pure. That which is pure according to doctrine. Okay? What did Paul say, pray, that he would be able to do? To speak the what? The mystery, right? So watch this. Truth is light and it's of Christ. But see, you can't get away with just that. It's also the mystery. Every one of these belong in the mystery program. So how in the world can you put on the whole armor of God if you don't know the mystery? Paul didn't believe so, did he? Because he was going to go preach the mystery of the gospel. He was going to go preach the mystery of Christ. So here you are, the gospel, the mystery, right? The faith of Jesus Christ, not after the flesh, right? That's a mystery. And they want to tell me there's not a mystery program in the Bible. The salvation we have is a mystery. That wasn't spoken of by the prophets, right? The word of God, right to divided, will show you what? The mystery, right? And when you pray, you ought to pray according to each one of these things, which will be what? According to the mystery. Right? There's light in every bit of that. What is the apostle really saying in Ephesians 6 when he says, put on the whole armor of God? From head to toe, be adorned with the doctrine, which is the armor of light. Have it in your mind, have it in your heart, have it in your loins, have the faith that you can quench the fiery darts of the wicked, right? Having that salvation assured that you learn through the teaching and the preaching of the Apostle Paul, that makes Romans 4, uh, 16 and 25 jump right off the page, doesn't it? Watch that. I know, we do it all the time. I could wallpaper my bedroom with it, but watch this. Romans 16, 25. It makes it jump off the page when you start to see this thing. This thing about the armor of God and the whole armor of God is about adorning doctrine. It's about learning pure doctrine. Speak the words that become sound doctrine. It's about your knowledge, your mind being eliminated. And it's about your understanding of each one of these things. Do you know the truth that was given to you folks? Where did you find it? Romans through Philemon, right? How many people really know that in Christianity? Not many. But you've got that truth. Now you've got the other as well. But you know where you live, right? The righteousness which you have, is it according to the law or is it according to the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, right? You know that, don't you? All right? The gospel that you have, is it the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of the grace of God? It's the gospel of the grace of God. Where would you find that? Paul's writings. What's this? The faith that you have in Jesus Christ, is it according to his flesh, according to his risen, ascended position at the right hand of the Father, the head of the church, the body of Christ? That's where your faith is at, right? Your faith is not following Jesus around Galilee and thinking whatever you ask Him for, you're going to get it. Your faith is in Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. 
right? All right? Your salvation, is that salvation spoken of before the Apostle Paul? Absolutely not. It wasn't in the Scripture before Paul. That's why it's a mystery. Right? And it's revealed to Paul. Can you see that? All right? Look down here. The sword of the Spirit. What happens if you take the Word of God, and we did this last week, and you don't make any divisions, and you don't make the correct divisions? We said last week, you cut the spiritual ears off of people. They believe that they're stuck back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in an Old Testament economy. And God has said, no, I put you over here in this body. And I want you to take the doctrine which Paul has given you. I want you to study and learn that doctrine. Study to show thyself approved a workman needeth not to be ashamed. Right to divide in the word of truth. And I want you to apply that doctrine. I want you to have that understanding. And I want you to live in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ that way. You see that? All right? So the Word of God. If the Word of God is not rightly divided, it kills people. There's people right now sitting in depressed state, calling themselves Christians. They have no idea if they're saved or not saved. One Sunday they feel saved. The next Sunday they don't feel saved. It depends on what the pastor does for them. Right? Well, listen. My hope of my salvation is not in a church building. It's not in a pastor. It's not in a preacher. It's not in a teacher. My hope of my salvation is what I've learned in truth and righteousness and the gospel and the faith that I have in Jesus Christ. Can you see that? All right. So then the sword of the Spirit. Now what I do with that is I pray in light according. And guess what? When I know not what to pray, the Holy Spirit does what? He makes intercession for me. But how does He do it? Through the light. Holy Spirit's never going to lead me back over here and tell me that I'm a sheep. He's never going to lead me back to that economy. You know why? Because he knows what God's doing today. Your preacher might not, your pastor might not, your teacher might not, but the Holy Spirit does. So this armor of light, this is having light. This is you being able to say, without the help of anybody, I know the truth that's to me. I can stand on Romans through Philemon, I know how to rightly divide the word of truth. You can sit and say, I know it's not my righteousness, it's his righteousness, Right? You can say, I know I have believed the gospel of peace. I have trusted what Christ did on the cross. I have the faith in the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for my sins, paid for my sins, buried for my sins, rose again the third day for my justification. That's where my faith is at. And by that faith, I have access unto God. I have peace. Access unto the grace wherein we stand. I have salvation. That's in me. Right? The spirit of the man, renew your mind in this word, in this doctrine, in this knowledge. It will do something for you. It will bring peace. Go over here and look at Philippians 4. Look at verse 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. Can I tell you anybody who has grown in knowing where they're seated, applying it, knowing where they've walked and how they're walking and how to stand, you can get up every day and have this armor of light on you. Regardless of how you feel, because it's not based on feeling, it's based on sound doctrine, it's based on the knowledge of it, and it's based on the understanding of it. So every day of your life, you can be equipped with the light of this armor. And when someone comes to you and says, well, you know, you could lose your salvation. You can say, uh-uh, uh-uh, brother. Uh, you're barking up the wrong tree, sir. You, you are way late. I can't lose what's not mine. It's His righteousness. It's the truth of Christ. It's the faith of Christ. It's the gospel of Christ. It's all of Christ. Can you see that? According to the Revelation of Mystery. I never read Romans 16.25, did I? No. That's good. Let's go to 4.4 4 of uh, Philippians here and let's look at prayer first. And then we'll close on Romans 16.25. How's that? Look here at 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I again say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. That means don't be anxious. Yeah. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. What was Paul's request? That a door of utterance might be opened and he might do what? He might speak. The mystery of Christ, the mystery of the gospel. Make your request known to God. You make that whatever you want to make it. But I would try to do it in the light of the scripture. I would try to pray according to the knowledge of the scriptures in which I have. Amen. And then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. 
Now go back over and look at verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Why, Paul? Because I have the full armor of light. I know it ain't about me. I know it's about Him. Every aspect of that armor is of Jesus Christ. God has furnished the armor. Now, it's what you do with your mind to how you put that light on or you don't put that light on. Right? So then how is it going to happen? Go to Romans 16, 25. Where I took you before. We're going we're gonna to list some things there and we're going to be done. <clears throat> now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel. First thing you need is what? Paul's gospel. Is there light in Paul's gospel? We already figured that out, didn't we? Number two, it says what? And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of mystery, doesn't it? All right. So preaching Christ, and we'll put mystery. Is there light in preaching Jesus Christ according to the mystery? Absolutely. If you miss it, you're in darkness. Doesn't matter who you are, preacher, teacher, pastor. If you don't know the mystery, you're in darkness. You think you know God, but you don't know Him the way that you need to know Him right here. All right? According to the revelation, which was kept secret since the world began. But now it's made manifest. Now watch this. He says you need something else. He says also by the Scriptures. Is there light in the Scriptures? All over. All over. All of God's Word is light, right? But what you got to be careful of is before you try to go get light, that light don't apply to you, right? By the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. All right? So this is God's commandment. That's God's commandment. Is there light when God commands you to do something? Well, he ain't doing it to put you in darkness, is he? Right? So it's God's commandment that we do what? That we preach Paul's gospel. That we preach Jesus Christ according to the mystery. That we use the scriptures to do so. How will we do that? We take what Paul preached and we compare it to what was preached before Paul. And we can see a difference, can't we? Paul said this was kept secret since the world began. Peter said what he was preaching was what? Made known by all the holy prophets since the world began. You see there's a distinction, right? So we compare it and we use the scriptures. And it's the commandment of God. All right. So then what's the last verse, chapter and verse? Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 14. Do I do things too simple? I mean, I'm just trying to make it where it's, we get it and we just go with it. I don't, I mean, there's no... There's no, yeah, we're not building a spaceship here, folks. We're just taking the scriptures and looking at them, right? All right. Look at verse 37 here. 14 and 37, 1 Corinthians. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Is there light in what Paul gave us? Amen. And they're what? The commandments of the Lord, right? Did Paul get that information out of Jesus' earthly ministry? Now, commandments of the risen Lord, ascended Lord. There's light. Everything that you've heard this morning straight from Scripture, and it's all about doing what? Casting off darkness. You want to win over darkness. You want to cast off darkness. It's not going to do for you just to put on a certain pair of pants, a certain tie or a certain shirt. That's not going to do it. You're going to cast off darkness. You're going to do it by knowing the truth rightly divided. Knowing about Jesus Christ, His righteousness. 
Can I tell you that these other Bible versions change the faith and the, the faith and the righteousness of Christ to in Christ? They change it. I'm not living off my righteousness. How many times I can do good. All that is nothing but filthy rags. I'm living off of His. I know my gospel. I know it's Paul's gospel. I know the faith that I have in Christ. I know the salvation. goes back to the question that she had this morning. When people want to put their faith in things, trusting in the Lord, but they have no idea of any of this light, and they're going to trust the Lord for other stuff. Folks, it's good to trust the Lord, but you need to know what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is asking you to do. And He's asking you to put on this whole armor of God. It's all light, and it all starts right there. A saved person, hearing sound doctrine, gaining knowledge by learning, illuminating their mind, and understanding and comprehending what they've learned through the Scriptures right to the Bible. Amen? Does that help anybody this morning? I, I didn't see... I, I've heard these men take these armors, and, and it's okay. One at a time, they break it all down, they talk about the war and all this business. Your war is spiritual. Yes. Right? Yep. And it's against the darkness and the rulers of this world. Yep. And your victory is in that light. Putting it on. How do I put it on? By sound doctrine again. It's in me. Right? In closing this morning, anybody sitting here this morning, can anybody change your mind that you can only be saved today by Paul's gospel? Anybody here? You, you believe that, right? Simply Paul's gospel, right? Does anybody believe in here that we ought to be following Christ in his earthly ministry instead of following Christ after Paul's ministry that he gave to Paul? Right? You got it? Does anybody here believe you're righteous enough to go to heaven? We're all doing what? We're leaning on His righteousness that's already been charged to our account, right? Did anybody have the faith that sits here and says, well, I can just tear down mountains and I can run out in the middle of the road and cars will run around me because I got all that faith and I glow because I got so much faith? That's not the faith we're talking about. It's not the faith we're talking about. Oh, if I give $10, God's going to replace it with $10,000. That's not the faith we have. Our faith is not that. Our faith is knowing our position that we're seated. We're now walking and we can stand. We're in Him. Our faith is it's all about Christ. He did it all and that's where we're at. Amen? Alright? Everybody's heart and mind clear this morning? Alright. Before we go off camera, I want to pray and then we'll, we'll go off camera and ask, ask questions, answer questions after we've done that. Okay? Alright? So let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for this day, another day of Your grace. My prayer here this morning, Lord, if someone has heard this message, if they've never trusted what Christ did on the cross and that alone for their sin, that they right now by faith would believe that He died for their sin, was buried, and He rose again the third day to forgive them, trust Him and Him alone, that they receive everything by faith in which He accomplished. If they would do that, they don't have to walk an aisle. They don't have to cry tears. They don't have to beg for forgiveness. All they have to do is believe that Christ died for their sins, buried and raised again, and trust His finished work to accomplish their salvation. If they would do that by faith, they could leave here today saved and on their way to heaven secure. Anyone watching the video do the same thing. Don't have to move a muscle. Don't have to move a finger. Don't have to say a word. Don't have to do anything except believe Jesus Christ did it all. Trust that and that alone. We're thankful for that. All that we have in Christ, we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. All that we are in Christ, we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. And everyone did say, Amen. Amen. All right.